Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you for joining me for tea time once again. I appreciate every one of you being here. So today we're gonna to be talking about 8K and are you ready for 8K? Now, just recently I was reading some articles about what is coming from Canon as well as Sony and it seems like both of them think that you are. Now, I wanna start out by saying the last couple of weeks, I've been really light on videos. And like I told you in my last video, I've been working really hard on the new product. And the new product has been released and everything is going unbelievably better than I even expected. We're literally almost sold out in about a week's time, I think now, um, with more product coming in. So it's just been amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, to all of you for supporting me. I really, really appreciate you. If you don't know what the product is, it's Aurora Camera Care, and I put together a camera sensor as well as lens cleaning kit, a uh, bundle and a non-bundle. So if you don't know, if you haven't seen it yet, go over to jchristina.com, give it a look-see, pretty cool stuff. Um, it just works, just simply works. That's what I'm always trying to come up with. Whenever I come up with new products, like for example, the Focus Pyramid or the PRT or whatever, um, it's always about just getting something that works, works well and it's easy, simple, safe, that type of stuff. So, and that's what we came up with on this product. So anyways, go check it out. Now, as far as the 8K, um, let me start out with Sony. Now, Sony was rumored to be releasing two new sensors. And what's really incredible here is they're said to be like up to 16 bit. Now, normally we know that the bit rate on these cameras are 12 bit or possibly 14 bit capture, but they're saying that these sensors are gonna be 16 bit and there's gonna be two. I'm gonna view these as probably an R series and an S series on the Sony side. One is 60 megapixels and the other one is 36 megapixels. So I'm guessing the 60 would be, let's say an R and the 36 megapixels would be their S version. Now, the 60 megapixel version is said that it will be able to capture about four and a half frames per second at 16 bit. Guys, that is crazy. There's like not much out there that can do that. 16 bit almost five frames per second, that is a lot. And then at the 14 bit, which is we what we normally see, they'll be able to capture 12 frames per second. Now, remember, these are 60 megapixel images. That's amazing. Also on the video side and where I'm going with this, they're said to be able to do 8K 30P at 12 bit, 8K at 60P, that's what everyone is looking for is that 60p magic number at 10 bit. That's really, really good. And 12 bit at 4K at 60p. So we're looking at really incredible specs here when it comes to video and of course, for the photo side, also just simple imagery. Now, sensor number two, which is 36 megapixels, that said to be able to do 10 frames per second, which obviously is gonna be more because you're gonna capture less megapixels at 16 bit or 60 um, FPS at 10 bit. Now, both of these sensors are supposed to have PDAF, which is their, let's call it like DP, dual pixel autofocus, but on the Sony side, so, everything's gonna have that going forward. And that makes absolute sense because they need a really good focus tracking system in this and PDAF is doing it for them. Um, especially it's on chip, so this is all happening in the background. Now, what is also said is they're going to, each one of these chips is going to have weighted uh, pixel binning. That is very important for getting that really the best image quality possible for your videos. Of course, also their dual gain, uh, ADC. I think ADC stands for analog to digital converter, whatever it is, I could be wrong, let me know. But anyways, it's supposed to be able to get two stops better dynamic range. Now that's really, really good. The majority of the folks out there today are not really looking for megapixels as much as they're looking for just incredible dynamic range, right? To be able to push and pull stuff as needed. So if things are really dark, you can pull those darks out and be able to recover them without a ton of noise. Or on the other side, if you have a 
just a little bit of a blown highlight, be able to bring that down a little bit. That dynamic range people are really looking for. Also, it's supposed to have digital overlap HDR. Now, that is like on-chip uh, DOL, which is digital overlap HDR. On-chip HDR, that is taking two images almost simultaneously within one six thousandth of a second, let's call it almost instantaneously, okay? And then blending the two together to get a even better dynamic range, that HDR effect. So it's also being said that they're not only gonna use these sensors for themselves, but they're gonna sell them to the third party. So we'll see them in, for example, Nikon cameras. So it all sounds great, right? But wait, <laughs> but wait, there's more. Canon is also rumored to be producing a 75 megapixel EOS R. So their next version, like a high performance model, but at 75 megapixel range. Now that kind of makes sense, right guys? Because we know that their current lineup of RF lenses are just really, really good. And they can resolve well in excess of 100 megapixels. So 75 is really where they need to be at to really start pushing these lenses to do what they are made to do. Right, So I can see that happening. So we know that Canon has really been putting a lot of emphasis on mirrorless and putting a ton of money into R&D on that side and maybe backing off a little bit on DSLRs. That being said, I do think that this chip that they come out with, this sensor, should be able to do 8K with that 75 megapixels that they're working on. So all rounded up. 8K we do see is coming and it's coming soon. My question to you guys is, are you ready for 8K? You know, is your system powerful enough to be able to edit 8K or maybe even 4K right now? Um, do you even care, right? Do you even care? Is your current workflow good enough for what you're doing? These are questions that we have to ask. Is 8K there? We know it's all about Moore's Law and that exponential growth that happens in the tech industry. And of course, photo is tech, video is tech, and Moore's Law is in effect. So we're getting there and we're getting there quick, but can we handle it? Can we handle it? The problem as I see it is not in gathering this data or capturing this data, it's in displaying it, right guys? We know that the majority of folks out there don't even have 4K TVs as of yet. And the ones that do, they're not getting 4K broadcast or a minimal amount of 4K broadcast. And we're still seeing 1080p right across the board years down the road. I know I built a system and some of you guys watched it in some of my videos, a couple hundred videos ago, um, when I built a 4K system and multiple 4K systems for the studio here. Have I been using it? Eh, I haven't been editing much 4K some for clients, but almost nothing for myself. But is it good to have a beefy machine? Yes, because when I do 1080p, it's quick, easy, fast, right? So it's nice that I did move into that arena, right, of 4K. Will this system be able to handle 8K? Eh, I don't know. Might be upgrading yet again. So, you know, the question is, are you excited about moving from 4K to 8K? Are you excited about massive amounts of megapixels? Does your workflow need it? You know, Or do you think that this might be problematic where let's just say maybe your system cannot handle it or maybe your backup system cannot handle it. You don't have enough room for such massive files. There's a lot of things that are affected when you gather more data, either in megabits or in megabytes or in megapixels or whatever. There's just a ton more data that you have to manipulate, save, store, right? So the question to you once again is, is it something that you care? Are you ready for it? Is this something that you're looking forward to or is it not? We know that it's right around the corner and it is coming. Where do you stand on it? 
So anyways, guys, I want to hear from you, as always, in the comment area. You guys are just a lot smarter than I am, and you come up with just amazing thoughts when it comes to the questions that I pose to you guys. So today, it's about 8K to 4K in larger megapixels. So that's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. If you enjoy my content, as always, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available. And don't forget to click the bell icon over here. So when it is available, you'll be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. I appreciate every one of you. Thanks again for stopping by, and I will see you very soon. Take care, guys.